Welcome to Economy Release and welcome to the ninth Global ICT Energy Efficiency Summit right here in Dubai's Medina Jumeirah. Now the theme today is building a intelligent future. And throughout the day at Economy Release, we're gonna be talking to some very, very interesting people across different sectors. Now shortly, we're gonna have a little look around this uh, wonderful exhibition. Gautam Nyana Jyoti, Global Vice President of Research at Frost & Sullivan. It's uh, great to have you here with us. Uh, thanks, Al. Very nice to meet you. Thanks for having all ours. Now, what are the main challenges facing uh, carriers and tower vendors in the energy sector? First, uh, there's going to be over $500 billion being invested in the telecom infrastructure. Now, what's, what's that going to do is, in terms of the number of base stations that are being added, it's two to three times more than what was added with 4G. And we have to look at it from a, what's the impact of 5G and all of these things before we understand the challenges, right? So I think one of the biggest impact areas is the increase in power consumption, which I think in terms of the, the total power consumed, it's, it's 1.5 times more than what we had with 4G. And now what's, what, what that'll do is in terms of the overall uh, uh, OPEX related issues and challenges. I think that's going to bring in a lot of the, the challenges pertaining to how the operators uh, you know, consume the power, how, how they operate their, their, their overall system. And I think in terms of the, 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 the efficiencies, the power densities, the form factor, all of that has a direct implication on, on the overall power consumption. And also when we look at it from a you know, OPEX perspective, now it depends. So how do you effectively operate and how do you keep the costs minimized as well, optimized as well? And I think when you look at it from a, from a regional perspective, uh, also you know, emerging economies such as Middle East, you know, uh, even Africa and Latin America, what we are seeing is in terms of the, 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 the challenges pertaining to grid, you know, stability is a big issue. And, and what happens is uh, you know, the, the, the power availability and also the quality of power that's available is a big issue. And then what's happening is, is, is these uh, sort of regions uh, tend to rely heavily on, on diesel gensets which again brings in a challenge in terms of sustainability, how do you operate you know, uh, sustainably and, and, and the, the, the carbon emissions and the noise pollution, even maintenance issues, and then there's the cost of fuel. So there's a lot, a lot of challenges associated you know, with that. Uh, and, and if you look at regions such as you know, Europe and, and even APAC, for instance. So yeah, overall, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting space to watch. Uh, yeah, it's a very uh, fascinating space to watch. Thank you. If the traditional network energy efficiency level and energy structures are maintained, operators will find it difficult to reduce carbon emissions and meet climate commitments in the future. In addition, operators will have to bear continuous erosion of operating profits due to increased energy spending. Faced with these challenges, the good news is that new energy technologies such as solar and energy storage continue to develop and the market is more mature. Research institutes predict that by 2030, the global installed capacity of renewable energy will triple that of the current and the penetration rate of new energy will increase to 62 percent. Saudi Vision 2030 and UAE Energy Strategy 2050 both put forward grand ideas for development of new future energy. The ICT industry's energy green transformation is undoubtedly based on a favorable environment. Today global operators and Tower companies have joined the wave of green ICT energy transformation. As a matter of fact, EAND has some ambitious plans by 2030 to be net zero in the UAE. In operations, they also have a pilot project, a green zone, set up in Dubai's Expo City by the name of E2E. The site is powered by 100% solar energy. There are 56 pieces solar panel that generate 140 kilowatt hour renewable energy every day. During the day, solar panel charge energy storage systems and site. During the night, ESS discharge and power the site. Ali Al Garabali, Zain Group's climate change senior manager. It's great to have you with us great here at Economy Middle East. Great to be here. Now, what actions has Zain taken to promote the green transformation of ICT energy? Uh, since the start of 2022, we've been uh, deploying and testing various uh, green energy solutions 
such as uh, solar hybrid, new battery solutions, uh, smart sites. Uh, we're currently um, the process of uh, deploying a trial, try a full smart site solution with AI and uh, solar hybrid to provide green power to our sites. We've tested a new green energy solution and uh, two of our sites. Um, we got good results. The power backup time was varies between the condition of the location of the site, uh, between 80 to 150 uh, percent power savings uh, on back time. Uh, and we're deploying uh, AI solutions to correlate between power and radio to save uh, power on around 40 percent of our sites in Kuwait, specifically. Ms. al -Fres, Global Vice President Site Power Domain Huawei Digital Power, it's great to have you with us here at Economy Middle East. Now I'll get straight to the point, what can we do to address the energy challenges of the ICT industry? So in Huawei, we have been promoting intelligent power device that we call eMIMO for energy multi-input, multi-output power supplies. We have intelligent breakers, so you can control from remote locations the breakers. Um, you have intelligent batteries, which is lithium batteries, which are also quite important into you know, these uh, side power solutions. And uh, finally, but not the least, you need to have an intelligent uh, management platform. So you can remotely visualize what's going on into your network. You can eventually adjust the parameters. We also first want to integrate synergies between the side power supplies, but also the RAN equipment. So now, if you have a Huawei RAN, basically you have the BBUs, you have the RAN which is communicating with the power supplies. So you can have adaptive power, basically based on a grid situations, based on the, uh, uh, and, uh, eventually if there is a big power outage, uh, like happened in, uh, in Portugal lately, uh, you heard about this big blackout, right? Uh, then you can decide to stop all the high frequencies, 5G, 4G, to maximize the time on, on the low band and, and the voice. And this is quite useful because if there is emergency, you, you expect people to call, right? So this is all kind of things we can do. Mohammed Gatasha, expert electromechanical optimization. Thanks for being here with us at Economy Middle East. Thanks, Anna. Now, how can AI and digital technologies be used to optimize energy efficiency and management efficiency and promote the upgrading of ICT energy infrastructure? Well, uh, artificial intelligence uh, and AI will uh, provide uh, ad uh, advance in the, in the predictive of maintenance and also uh, support us in the efficiency and more uh, smart uh, technology to, to detect and with you without any impact during the reliability and proactive for the networks. Paolo Gemma, ITU Study Group 5, working party to chair. It's great to have you with us here at Econo Middle East. Now, um, clean energy and intelligent upgrades power the ICT green transition, while energy storage systems serve as its foundation. The safety of ESS is pivotal in the success of this transition. What are the top lithium battery energy storage issues you suggest to pay attention to in industry applications? Lithium battery is a uh, user for ESS is a very big mess. Oh, a lot of uh, noise around the world about what happened on uh, energy storage. What is important from safety in point of view is the quality of the battery. How they are designed, how they are manufactured, they should be in a very clean way and accurate uh, way. What is important is also to follow some standard on uh, safety point of view on what can happen to battery for over voltage, for fire, and also uh, on battery fire itself. But lithium battery, unlike there's some problem with thermal runway, that can uh, happen to the battery to take, uh, for short, some issue inside, take to show, go fire. Every standard, to protect the battery, to test if the battery is safe. And some battery have no problem, some other have problem. Depends a lot also on the, the type of battery. 
normally the lithium ferrofossil is a little better and more stable respect to other type of technology. And standard from ITU, from other, from IC, from UR, are made just to test the quality of a battery. So it's very important, especially in telecom world, to use high quality battery. Because we help a lot of operators to not have issue in the field and also to protect the, the life of the people to avoid any issue with fire. Intelligence and sustainability is no longer an option, but they stand as key pillars of growth in this industry. As a matter of fact, with technologies such as 5G, AI, and green technologies, these present unprecedented opportunities for telecom companies to be much more, to become digital technology enablers. As global digital transformation accelerates, there is growing urgency to develop greener, low-carbon networks that not only meet performance demands, but also align with environmental and economic goals.